Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bahrain Now with me, your host, Bara Abdullah. We've got a great show coming up featuring great local talents, initiatives, and happenings from around the kingdom. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the Heart Matters campaign launched by the medical students at the College of Medicine and Medical Sciences at the Arabian Gulf University at the Avenue Small continues for the second day in a row to spread awareness of heart diseases in conjunction with the global campaign to raise awareness of heart diseases. And to speak more about that, we are joined here in the studio by Arabian Gulf University students, Madam Sawedi and Yasmin Khalaf. Well, good evening. How are you? Hello, good evening. We're fine. Amazing, amazing. So second day in a row, a lot of good stuff been going on, a lot of reception. Tell us more about the campaign. All right. Um, so first of all, we're very happy and very excited to be here representing the team of organizers of Heart Matters, the Heart Disease Awareness Campaign. So to begin with, um, uh, we're a group of medical students from Arabian Gulf University. Most of us are interested in studying further about cardiac health. Therefore, we decided to plan for an event that focused on heart diseases. We conducted our event within the month of February because it is the Heart Disease Awareness Month that has been allocated by the American Heart Association. Mm -hmm. All right, so before I talk further more about our event, I'd like to thank the Arabian Gulf University and our strategic partner, Bahrain Defense Force Hospital, BDF, as well as our success partners, Bahrain Petroleum Company, Bobco, National Bank of Bahrain, NBB, Kuwait Finance House, KFH, as well as the Avenues Mall for hosting our event. They provide us with tremendous support all throughout the campaign. Mm. In our opening ceremony, we were honored by the presence of Ms. Sabiq Al-Fadala, a member of the Shura Council, as well as Dr. Abdurrahman Yusuf, the Vice President of Arabian Gulf University. Amazing. So pretty much it was a very active event, you know, and a lot has been going on. Tell us about the reception by the people at the campaign. Um, so we've had a good public interaction. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the event consisted of seven main stations. Mm. Um, the first station would be the registration station. So, uh, so the visitors would begin with this first station and we would collect their names, some of their demographic information. Mm. Uh, we could also uh, assess some risk factors, for example, any previous um, uh, cardiac uh, conditions right. or family history of any cardiac conditions as mm. well as uh, diabetes, um, hypertension. Okay. Um, yeah, and then they would start uh, with the other stations. So the first two stations uh, consisted of the awareness stations. Okay. And, um, and in these two awareness stations, we would educate the visitors about uh, different uh, common heart conditions uh, mm. such as hypertension um, and how hypertension could lead to heart failure. Um, yeah, and another station would talk about coronary artery disease and its different subtypes. Uh, we would educate the visitors about the signs, the symptoms, the clinical features mainly, mm. and what are the treatment plans. Um, and then they would proceed to station three, uh, uh, to station three and four. Okay. And these two stations were mainly examination stations. Um, we would uh, take their blood pressure measurements and their um, random blood glucose levels. Um, and then we would assess if that's normal, if that's high. Mm. And then they would proceed to the fifth station, which is a consultation station. So we offered free consultation for all visitors. We had cardiologists um, coming all the way from BDF, from Selmania Hospital, okay. as well as from Awali Hospital. And visitors um, could uh, just pass by and had a free consultation. And then the last station was the uh, test your knowledge station. So we would kind of test these uh, visitors a bit about you know, what they learned from the previous stations. Right. And then uh, they would get uh, coupons, they would get gifts. So yeah, no one left uh, empty handed. Nice, yeah. I mean, I would fail, I'm sure of yeah, that. No, <laughs> we didn't let anyone lose. Amazing, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's pretty much like a journey. Yeah. They yeah. go through different stations, they get to learn, they get to be educated, and they leave with a coupon and a smile on their face. Yeah. Yeah. But mostly, is pretty much getting the an eye opener of what's really going on with heart diseases all exactly. around together. So, you know, AGU being pretty much a pillar in the medical scene here in Bahrain, how did AGU support you with all of this? 
Uh, so AGU provided us with all the guidance and support throughout uh, organizing this event. Um, and as, as an AGU student, I have witnessed so many events and so many campaigns being held mm. uh, throughout these years. So, uh, for example, this year alone, we already had three uh, main campaigns and this was the third one. Yeah. So this really reflects how um, AGU uh, really teach us the importance of volunteering and giving back to the community. Oh, that's right. beautiful. And all medical students coming in pretty much having a face to face talk with visitors yes. and yes. giving back to the community as pretty much preparing them for the future actual career path and, you know, the community service to everybody. Yes, that is beautiful. Now, heart disease, cardiac attacks and all of that. What can we do to pretty much prevent them or at least stay away from them and just like steer away from the possibility of having it? So what can you tell us? Okay. Well, um, the main goal of our event was to assess and educate the general population about heart diseases, the most common ones, and about the risk factors that could potentially lead to heart disease. So to name a few, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, and smoking. These are just mm. a few of them, even though we have lo a long list, we can go on. Okay. But uh, just to name a few and uh, make the people more aware of them. So by treating those risk factors or controlling them, you're not only preventing heart disease, you're also uh, controlling pre-existing heart conditions if they okay. are present to maintain a good quality of life. Amazing, amazing. And from what you've seen, this was pretty much a necessity to have as a campaign to tell people about what's really going on. Yes, of course. As like more and more cases have been going up, you know, yeah. pretty much uh, people are now less motive. They are yeah. less mobile. They're yeah. just pretty much yeah. more convenient than before and sitting down so they don't get to move a lot as before, not a lot of motion. And nutrition can be a questionable thing right now as well for a lot of people. So thank you so much for making this happen and putting a lot of smiles you know, out there and plus educating people like myself and everybody else. Any last words you want to like to give right now to your viewers right here on Bahrain Now? Uh, yes, I would like uh, to thank all the uh, organizers, head organizers. Uh, without them, this event wouldn't be possible. Mm. Uh, starting with uh, Jawahar Bubshet, uh, Mariam Al Dosiri, uh, Dana Al Mahmoud, uh, Fatma Al Jazeera, Bayan Al Sayyak, uh, Mariam Al Fadala, Amazing. Uh, and Nufal Ansari, uh, Wajdan Al Batli, uh, Khalid Aliani, and um, Ahmed Al Ali. Uh, without them, this wouldn't have been possible. And I would also like to thank Bahrain TV for giving us this opportunity Most to be pleasure. here today. And my last message through this media platform would be um, to, uh, it's important to assess um, any uh, cardiovascular or any heart condition, mm. uh, because after all, the heart really does matter. It so, does, it yeah. does. Any last words? Um, thank you for having us today. Um, we really wanted all of the members actually to be here because all of them did such a great job. Amazing. Everyone was interactive, everyone was there, everyone was present, everyone knew their roles, exactly what to do, and they overall give such huge support for this campaign. We also want to thank all the participants who joined in in our campaign. They also made this happen all together. And thank you for having us today. It was definitely the most pleasure for us. Thank you so much and for your amazing team. So we're going to Pass by, see what's happening over there, and get the coupon <laughs> <laughs> at the very end, and be informed with what's really going on. How can we prevent heart disease? Nice. Big shout out to you and to your team, and thank you so much for joining us right here on Bahrain Now. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Yasmin and Mariam from the AGU telling us of what's happening with the Heart Matters campaign. Take care of your heart, and all that took place right here in interview on Bahrain Now. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have yet another wonderful wordsmith with us in the studio crafting enchanting beautiful stuff all together in one place. As she proves that bound to have you hooked with every word, let's get creative with Ghufran Ahsan. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, how are you? I am great and excited to know more about your talent and your wordsmithing, all that together. Thank you for having me. It's most definitely a pleasure. So tell us more about yourself. So, um, my name is Kofran Hussein. I'm 20 years old. I am a medical student, full-time medical student. Oh, wow. And uh, I do bits of writing as well. Mm. So now you're doing medical studies yeah. and you're right. Yeah. Very casually. 
Yeah. They're like, it's so simple. Yeah, I just you know do medical stuff and then I write on the side. <laughs> how how did you get into writing? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't remember the exact process of how I got into writing because right. uh, I used to write um, ever since I was in grade one and <laughs> I would just write for magazines or things like that and huh. I didn't really know I enjoyed doing it. I just did okay. it for fun and people would just love what I write. So I was like, okay, you know, they're enjoying it. I'm just doing it. I'm just doing my thing uh, until I entered my teenage years mm. where I actually penned down my uh, first book, which is uh, Undressed. Really? Yeah, in I was school? 15. You and were 15 yeah, you I wrote 15. your first book? <laughs> yes. And um, I wrote it and then I completely just snapped out of it. I was like, no, I'm not going to publish it because uh, I think as writers, we're always insecure about uh, what we write. Right. Right. You just don't want to offend or upset someone because, uh, because you know, what you write and it's, it's too personal sometimes and okay. you don't want to get judged for it. So I kind of was in that teenage phase where I didn't want to, you know, be bullied or I didn't want to be judged mm. by my classmates. So I just kind of just wrote the book and I just kept it in the corner. So uh, I think until the very lockdown, the first lockdown when it hit us, uh, I found uh, myself uh, just getting into anxiety and it wasn't really good for me. Mm. So I wanted something. Uh, I wanted a little break from everything I was doing of course, yeah. and uh, I told my mom like you know I, I just don't know what's, what's really happening and she said you're a great writer and I know that for a fact so just do what you do and you have me so I was like it's beautiful yeah you have me yeah yeah and I was like yeah okay I'm gonna do it and then I penned my first book down which was okay. uh, Isotope it was a science fiction book um, it kind of revolved around the idea of alternate dimensions mm. so uh, I think I, I love a lot of things. I love sports. I love physics. I love uh, you medicine. Love physics. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, and, and I love medicine, and I wanted to get myself uh, involved in everything. So, okay. uh, but I was always told that you know, growing up, you can just have one career because, uh, like, if you have a lot of things to do, it's just like a master of none, basically. Right. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do until. Um, you know, 11th grade and I was like, okay, let me just stick to medicine and then let's see what works out. And then Alhamdulillah things happened and my books got out. Don't you think it's just fascinating how the human brain can actually do so much and so many and so well at the same time? I think it's quite like we underestimate ourselves. We do all the like, time. We just think that, okay, you know, that's my dream job and I'm just going to keep working hard right. for it. Or I'm a student. Yeah, yeah, I'm a student. I'm just going to study and I don't think there's a life except for that. Like, if you truly just explore yourselves, mm. I think you can, you can do multiple things at the same time. True, true. You know, as people like myself struggle to even finish an email without having <laughs> any grammatical mistakes, there you are, the age of 15, writing your own book. Now, as we introduce it as a word smith, now, what is that feeling that you get when you put these words together and you weave them into a paragraph expressing your own feelings? How does that feel? So, um, I think I get more excited when I talk about poetry because I've always been a poet before being a writer. Okay. So, uh, I usually write about domestic violence or eating disorders or I write about mental health. Hmm. And it's kind of weird because people ask me where do you get your inspiration from? Right. Because these are very... Uh, triggering topics they are yeah so much. i myself don't know where i get the inspiration <laughs> to write these must be netflix <laughs> <laughs> actually um it is the stories i see or the stories i hear or people right. they come tell me you know like yeah i've been through this and it kind of like gets I, I get furious like i can't do anything about it except just listen so i pen it down <laughs> and it, down. it becomes a poem okay so now at the age of 15, you wrote a book. You penned your first book. I mean, I just learned this uh, phrase now, <laughs> penning. <laughs> and now, being a medical student, do you feel that that goes hand in hand? That does one help the other field? Does writing help you being a medical student and the other way around? Um, actually, I write because I am a medical student. Because okay. um, being a medical student, I have no spare time. So if I have spare time, I love, I love sleeping, so I just sleep. <laughs> Everybody's favorite hobby. I know, and <laughs> sometimes I read so much, or I, I'm so you know, busy doing an assignment or studying for an exam that right. I have burnouts. And mm. I'm like, I want to do something else, and that's when I turn to writing. And sometimes it's like I'm studying for an exam and I have beautiful words come to my head, and I'm like, mm. I want to pen it down, but I can't stop what I'm doing right now. Right. 
like I'm studying, so I can't just leave it there. So what I do is I just quickly take a voice memo and uh, huh. <laughs> I just keep it there. So whenever I have time, I pen okay. it down. <laughs> okay, well, that's very smart, actually. You, know, <laughs> you are so dedicated to your craft. I love that. So now, how many books have you written so far or penned? Sorry. Um, so far, I've published two of my books. Okay. My first book was uh, a science fiction isotope, yes. and the second one uh, was ironically the book which I penned down uh, when I was 15. So I didn't publish it first. Okay, well, and what's that book? Uh, so I recently got it published um, mm. because I was still very insecure about my poetry because I said my poetry is very triggering. Like I have domestic abuse there, and it's very raw. Like my mm. words, I don't filter it. Sometimes I get upset. Like maybe I should filter it. Because you know, I Maybe hate you that. Not. <laughs> because I hate that feeling, you know, when someone gets offended because of what I write, or um, they get upset. Like, you know, it's maybe it's better that people don't know this version of uh, this social issue or this cause or something mm. like that. And it makes me feel like, okay, you know, maybe I should just filter some words out. Now, did you upset anybody with your book so far? Uh, I've upset it quite, quite a lot. Huh? I think See, that's a good reaction. I think negativity <laughs> comes, you know, whenever there's art or there's something, negativity right. comes with of it. Of course, you stir some emotions, definitely. So now, this is what you've done. Do you feel that you want to take your pen to another direction? Your wordsmithing to another direction? You want to write more stuff or you just want to pretty much emphasize on what you've been reading before, but pretty much more crafty? What What is the future so right here? I've, I'm not going to stop writing, I know that of for course. sure. Yeah. Uh, my first book is actually a trilogy, and uh, there are more parts it's to it. It's a trilogy, it. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I've just released uh, part one, part okay. two, part three are yet to come. Um, I write a lot actually, I write about science fiction, crime fiction, uh, I write horror fiction. Uh, <laughs> and so I think I'm, I'm going to explore that genre more. Horror fiction yes. and science all together. That's, that's a good combination <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for more abuse <laughs> in the future. This is very interesting. Now, can you tell us a little, like, a little brief about your, one of the stories you've been written, like a paragraph? You got me really curious right now. Okay, so I, I can talk about Ice Reese? for sure. Yes. So uh, it, the whole idea is around, it's actually written in a time period where Earth faces a scarcity of food and uh, you know they start seeking alternatives. So it's a bunch of friends who accidentally enter in an alternate dimension mm. where there's a lot of land, there's a lot of food, uh, but there's um, something else going on as well. So it's not the same as Earth. So everything over there is constantly evolving. They have different creatures there. Okay. It's a whole different world, I would say. Right. And they're trying to build on it. Okay. Huh. That's a good teaser. <laughs> it's a nice trailer. Thank you. If you need a narrator, let us know. <laughs> yeah, sure. For your book, like an audio book, and maybe you can sell it somewhere in one of the movies. That yeah. sounds great Would to you want to see your uh, story becoming a movie one day? Um, maybe. Maybe? You never thought of that? Never thought of it. No, you did. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. How can we help you with all of this? Uh, we got really curious now. How can we say what can happen? Well, are you going to write another book? You want to talk about it more? So I'm actually currently working on another book, um, which is a horror fiction. Horror fiction. Yeah. So cool. I I love horror movies. I think, <laughs> I think I, I'm I'm that kind of girl, you know, who lives in her own head, yeah. and who just creates world. Like I have this whole world in my head, and I live in it, and that's what I write about. I, you know, you reminded me of an interview uh, that we had, like a distance interview with Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips for oh the movie God. Joker. <laughs> oh my God. It took place on this very own channel as well. They look very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're talking about horror, abuse, uh, crime, and fiction, and all of that. And I'm like, but she's a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, creativity pretty much comes from a very interesting place of the brain. Exactly. You know, it takes a lot. Okay, so it's going to be a horror fiction. Yeah. Can't wait to read that. How horrific is it? Is it too horrific to our own liking here in this region? So I think uh, I'll be releasing the cover soon. I um, mean, you can always find more on my social media. Uh, but it's a collection of short stories. So uh, I have like a collection of 12 short stories, all okay. of them horror. And uh, yeah, right. that's pretty much the book. Amazing, amazing. You never know. Maybe it'll become a series. We're going to see it pretty <laughs> much produced and fully narrated or even fully voiced. I wouldn't mind auditioning for your books. All <laughs> oh my That's God. For sure. That means so much. Ah, come on, let's go for it. Now, any last words for your viewers? Um, yeah, I think uh, as writers or, or as anything, whatever you do, uh, you sometimes want to achieve something, but then you don't do it because you face a lot of negativity. 
Right. Like people say that, you know, you're not good at it, you should stop or this isn't meant for you. I don't think you should stop just because they're saying that. You just need to find the right audience and just redirect yourself there, right? Because uh, once you know you have a good set of audience who's like ready to read what you write or mm. listen to what you have to say, mm. uh, half of your job is done. Right. Because encouragement is what drives you, I think. That's, that's what I believe. Wow, wow. Ghafran, this has been a very delightful talk. Thank you so much for joining us right here and accepting the invitation of being with us right here on Bahrain now. Thank you for having me. Most definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it yourself from Ghafran saying about how you can fight your negativity or just change your audience. All that took place right here in the interview on Bahrain now. Hello everyone, I'm very happy that you're joining me today in this sunny morning in this great activity organized by Bahrain Raid Extreme where we will get into this amazing car for a rally ride with Sebastian Loeb, a world rally champion for at least nine times with a great record of achievements. Now let's go take a look at this amazing car. The nine-time World Rally Champion shows everyone today what makes the Pro Drive Hunter special. Sebastian Loeb is targeting victory in next month's Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge to put Bahrain Raid Extreme on course for a maiden title triumph in the inaugural FIA World Rally Raid Championship after finishing second in last month's Dakar Rally in Saudi Arabia. From a base at Bahrain International Circuit, BRX has completely rebuilt Loeb's Pro Drive Hunter after creating Dakar history in Saudi as the first top team to complete the rally with cars running on next generation advanced sustainable fuel. We have with us here Mr. David Richards, the chairman of Pro Drive. Hello, very nice to meet you today. Good morning. Good morning, very good morning, and a very nice idea to have this activity. Well, it's a, an opportunity for us to demonstrate the car here to some of the local journalists and people who've supported us throughout Dakar last month. Yes. Um, may you uh, give us a brief about BRX? BRX team is a team that was formed to, uh, uh, to compete in Dakar Rally, which takes place in Saudi Arabia every year now. Dakar is probably the most famous, uh, the most challenging car rally in the world. It's, uh, I've described it to people before as like Mount Everest of car rallying. So it's, um, the car's been specifically designed to compete on Dakar. And we've got here today Sebastian Loeb, nine times world champion, driving for us. He finished second this year, so we've uh, uh, got a little bit more work to do, but uh, we were very competitive throughout Dakar this year. And, uh, and we carry on the world championship competing in, in Abu Dhabi in a month's time. Yes, how are you preparing for it? Well, there's the cars being rebuilt at the moment, some further testing before we go to Abu Dhabi, but uh, we're looking very, very positive, very competitive now. And now it's time to get suited up to get ready for this thrilling ride. Since Dakar, Loeb has secured a memorable 8th career win in the Monte Carlo Rally in his first World Rally Raid Championship start since 2020. And the Frenchman is in Bahrain this week as BRX fine-tunes preparations for the Desert Challenge running from 5th to 10th of March. Today, VIPs and members of the media had the opportunity to discover for themselves why the greatest rally driver of all time and the Pro Drive Hunter form such an amazing combination. This was a mind-blowing experience and 
you have to try this for yourself. It, it cannot be described in words. And right now, I'm very happy that I have here with me our amazing World Rally Champion, Sebastian Loeb. Hello, thank you for being with us today. Hello, thank you. Um, please tell me about your experience with Bahrain Raid Extreme. Uh, for me, it's a, a good experience. Now it's the second year we, we are driving in the Dakar Rally uh, with this car. Now it's the new evolution. Last year was the first year, so we were looking a bit to, to find the, the, the good way and uh, to, to have the good setup. But now with this new, new car, uh, it was really good this year. We finished second. For sure, the, the goal is to finish first, but uh, our arrival was really strong. We, we had a, two little problems uh, and we lost a bit of time, but uh, for the rest, we were really in a good rhythm. So I, I had a good rally. It was fun to drive. And um, now we will continue the experience with Barricks for the World uh, Cross Country Championship. Uh, so the next round will be in Abu Dhabi. And, and so on, so I, I like driving with this car. Uh, I enjoy to have the, the support of Bahrain because uh, it seems that it's a lot of passion uh, in the, uh, around the motorsport here and so it's, it's nice to be here today. That's great and we wish you the best of luck with Abu Dhabi and uh, all the best. Uh, may you please share with me what is your experience with motorsport? How, how did you realize that you're interested in it? It's a long time ago now. Uh, I, I was 22 when I started. It's not so young, uh, but uh, I always, when I was young, was watching motorsport, but uh, I didn't have any entry to go there. And uh, finally, it was a selection in France for the young drivers uh, to, to find the young, some new young drivers. And I entered in this selection, and, and from that time, that, that one, I, I could start in the in the rallies. And uh, since that. Uh, it's still my passion, and uh, I did a few few titles in uh, in WRC, and I did uh, some other experience also. Uh, but uh, and now the main goal is to do Dakar. So may I ask you, like, for how many years now you've been into motorsport? Twenty-five years. <laughs> wow. It's a long time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Okay, how do you prepare before any championship? How I prepare? Uh, the most important is to be fit, to be in a good shape. So uh, I try to, to do some sports and, and, and to be active. Uh, I don't do sport every day. I do sport just to keep fit. And that's my way of, of preparing. And, and then also uh, it's a lot of, of testing with the cars and that keeps you in the rhythm. Were you welcomed in Bahrain? Yeah, I was really welcome uh, in, in, in Bahrain. Uh, it's my first time here. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to, to spend around, but uh, I was uh, in the uh, Formula One track yesterday uh, to meet some, some people from, from Bahrain. And also uh, yesterday night, it, it was uh, the drag race there, uh, the testing, and it was just uh, impressive. So, uh, and what I see especially is a lot of passion about motorsport, and that's, that's great to see. That's great and it's our pleasure to have you with us today and thank you so much for this amazing drive. It's a life-changing experience. I'll never forget this ever. Yes, thank you. The BRX Pro Drive Hunter is a product of the partnership between Bahrain Mumtalakat holding company Mumtalakat, the sovereign wealth fund of the Kingdom of Bahrain and Pro Drive, the British motorsport and engineering group. After taking the BRX guests on a series of drives over the desert terrain, Loeb immediately will turn his focus to Abu Dhabi, where he will be making his first Desert Challenge appearance. Bahrain has always been the home of motorsport in the region, and today Bahrain Raid Extreme is organizing a great event for people to enjoy the rally experience, not with anyone, with the World Rally Champion for nine times, Sebastian Loeb. Such an amazing experience. Heba Abdel Ghaffar, Bahrain International. Well, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as I did. Don't forget to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below and stay tuned for more happenings right here on Bahrain Now. I'm Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye and God bless.